like to say good morning to another Sunday school lesson, and we want to thank God for allowing us to come back once again and to share uh, his word, and we thank God for each and every one of you, and we're going to still be in the book of Revelation. Today we're going to be in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. We pray that God has been blessing you through these series of lessons that we've been sharing with you guys, and got a lot of scripture, so I hope you have a pen and piece of paper so that you can write these down. As uh, my sister was saying, Revelation is nothing to be afraid of. As a matter of fact, God gave the, the, mess, the vision to John to give to the church. And therefore, we are the church. And there's some good, interesting things in here that God wants us to know about what's going to happen in the last days. So again, if, if we, once we got our business straight with Christ and we're walking in love, we don't have anything to fear. We're still talking about the theme, celebrating God. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've been celebrating God through these series of lessons. Uh, Sister uh, Jackie, she spoke about uh, God's people offer praise. Sister Sullivan came back and talked about call to praise. And this series of lessons that we're going to be talking about is going to be the visions of praise. And before we get started, we want to honor the pastor, Pastor Speech. Thank you for coming in the absence of Sister Speech, uh, Superintendent Marcus, Assistant Superintendent uh, Atcher, and Minister uh, Marcus, Evangelist Southern, and the whole Sunday School Department. We just thank God again for our space, and we thank you for your prayers. Again, we're talking about uh, the lesson today is coming from the 11th chapter of Revelation. The topic is... Praise for God's eternal reign. And we talk about God's reign, we're talking about God's going to be in charge of everything, anything. He's going to have the last say so about what's going to happen. We say revelation means to uncover, means to reveal something hidden, uh, to bring light to the unknown truth. Of course, as we study the word of God, sometimes we may ponder upon the particular passage of scripture just don't get it just yet, but it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal or to bring that hidden truth out. Because a lot of times we try to read the scripture just on the top. But it's something beneath those words. And the more we spend time in God's word, as I said, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us what we need to know at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, Apostle John, he's the writer according to the history. John, Apostle John, uh, the author of St. John. And also the first three letters, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Mm -hmm. So he's penned in this particular book also, Revelation. And John, he's writing to the seven churches that we spoke about last week. He's writing to these seven churches of Asia, Asia Minor. And he also encouraged believers. He encouraged the church today that are going through suffering and persecution, you know, because of their faith, that God is in control. And you know, many believers may not say, they, they may be thinking like, well, how is God in control with all the evil and all the suffering and all the things that are going on in the world? Beloved, we have to keep in mind that God is the God of the church. And we know who's the God of this world system. He's not our God, but he's the God of this world system. And Jesus spoke about that many times in his gospels where he was speaking parables. But, you know, again, uh, God has everything in control by his divine will. Mm -hmm. And that there's nothing Satan doing that God doesn't know about it. You know, he, God knew he was going to be uh, rebellious in heaven before he kicked him out in, to, to the earth. So, again, God is in control. And it, it behooves us as children of God that we stay prayed up. Uh, the scripture tells us that we're wrestling not against what? Flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against what? Principalities, mm -hmm. spiritual wickedness, mm -hmm. high places, mm -hmm. the rulers of the doctors of this world. Mm -hmm. That's what we as children of God, as we walk in the spirit, there's a war going on 24-7. And of course, as if, if, if we keep our minds renewed with God's word, we don't have to worry about nothing. All I need to do is make sure that I line up my mind mm -hmm. with God's word. Mm -hmm. Then I can prove what's good. <coughs> what's acceptable, mm -hmm. and what's pleasing mm -hmm. in the sight of God. He wants his children to have the best. Yes. God wants us to walk through the earth, this earth not being afraid, but to be what more than conquerors mm -hmm. through Christ who love us. And we said that the book of Revelation uh, is a book of symbols. 
And there are somewhere close to 300 symbols in the book of Revelation. Each one of these symbols mm -hmm. represents something or they're going to point to a particular area. Mm -hmm. And as you read the book of Revelation, sometimes it will unfold itself. In so many words, it, it will kind of compose itself. It tells us what these symbols are. Also, we have images, numbers, metaphors, uh, figures of speech. And the number seven is to stand out to us because we talked about that last week. That number seven uh, speaks of uh, completion and perfection. And as we get further into the lesson, uh, these series of lessons that we've been talking about, remember last week talked about what? Seven seals. Now we're going to kind of go into seven trumpets. And after the seven trumpets, we're going to go into the seven bowls. And this is where, uh, this is God's judgment to unbelievers. And of course, to the end of evilness. And as we said last week also, our judgment, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, not the white throne judgment, but when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, our judgment is going to be for accountability, stewardship, mm -hmm. and rewards. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, God, he, he desires for all of us to be working while it is still day. Because of course, as the scripture says, when night comes, no man can work. And we said also one of the best ways to understand the book of Revelation is, is in the first chapter, the 19th verse. God gives John a vision. And uh, John, he has to say what the Spirit of the Lord gives to him because he's in the Spirit. And when I say vision, I'm talking about prophecy too. John is in the Spirit as he shares this revelation with us. Mm -hmm. and, the scripture tells us in the 19th verse, uh, he was told to write the things which he had seen. And we said last week, uh, some of the things that John saw was in the first chapter of Revelation. And one of the most important things that, he, uh, that John saw was the glorified Christ as judge, as these seven churches and also as unbelievers. Also, not only that was John was uh, told to write the things which he had seen, he also was told to write the things which are which is presence. This is the present tense of it. Now, what, what's present? Well, you look at these seven churches that a message that a message was given to by the Spirit of God, and John had to echo that message to these seven churches. And as we said last week, God had a message for every church. Mm -hmm. And even today, even we as children of God, we are in the end time. We're one of the end time churches today. So whatever that message was that God gave to these seven churches, we can also apply it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We know that God doesn't want lukewarm children of God. He either say you'll be hot or you're going to be cold. And he also encouraged us as we go through our trials and persecution just to, just to give thanks what in all things because this is the will of God. Uh, we also echoed a little bit on that John, uh, this vision was uh, on the island of Patmos. And he was banished there or exiled there by the Roman imperialists because he just spoke God's word too much. They just keep, couldn't keep his mouth shut. I mean, he, that, that's what, that was John's life. He just spoke the word of God and because of the testimony of Jesus Christ and you and I both know sometimes when you talk about Jesus, sometimes you can get in trouble because Jesus said in this word you're going to have what? Troubles. Trouble. You're going to have tribulations. You're going to have persecution, but we need to say, be of good church, be of good what? Courage. Mm -hmm. I've overcome what? The world. So therefore, that makes us overcomers too. Mm -hmm. As we exercise our faith, we talked a little bit about the six seals, which, is, which we're not going to go into that. Now, I said last week also, there was a pause between the sixth and the seventh seal. Uh, that pause was uh, that God's judgment had kind of paused a little bit and his mercy was extended so that he could uh, put his seal on those 144,000 Jews. Remember we talked about the, the 144,000 Jews that God was going to seal. And these were his people, of course, and as Revelation 7 said, and John had that vision, that God uh, placed a seal on them as they go through that tribulation. Even though they're going to be witnesses also for the Lord, but they're going to also suffer persecution too. But just think about all the people that they're going to influence. Because remember also we talked about John saw a number that what? No man could count. 
So therefore, again, uh, God's got this thing all in control. But but Revelation is very good. If you really get into it, it can be very interesting. I mean, sometimes you'll chuckle a little bit because of the different images that they may use. Uh, you know, a, a beast with seven heads and seven arms. You're like, what is this? But all that is is a symbolic of maybe a person or a nation in so many words. You think about our four most important nations today. You got Russia, you got China, you got a lot of other just United States. And you think about where they are. Are they all doing the right thing? No. You can't say they all doing the right thing. No, no, no. Remember now, uh, Satan has people in high places. Remember what we talked about? The principalities, the spiritual wickedness, the rulers of the darkness of what? This world. Satan has those folks there by design. Therefore, as children of God, we can't worry about the world. We have to focus on what God has what commissioned and called us to do. So as we get a little bit into the lesson, I want to kind of uh, look at some of these trumpets, trumpets here. Uh, as I said before, there was a pause between the sixth and the seventh uh, trumpet. And uh, as we look at the uh, first trumpet, but what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what, to make it more easier, instead of me going through all, all of them, I'm going to kind of bind the first four, and then we'll kind of bring them all together as one. That seven, that seven seal uh, that this angel uh, will be bringing is going to be ushered in uh, as a trumpet. And the first four trumpets judgment is going to be talking about one-third of the earth will be burned. It's also is going to say that uh, the seas of the, the seas will be turned to blood, and it also will be polluted by uh, drinkable water. The, the drinkable water will be polluted, and also the sun, the moon, and the stars they're going to be darkened. All this is is just getting a little bit more intense as, into some of the trumpet judgments that God is going to release. But it's going to get more intense as we get to the fifth, sixth, and the seventh trumpet. Keep in mind, when we talk about the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh trumpet, these are going to be the three woes that God has an angel or an eagle that's going to be flying in the air. And what he's going to be doing, proclaiming these three woes. And with these three woes, when we talk about the three woes, we're talking about suffering, affliction, grief. And you're going to have people that going through this particular tribulation that's going to be wanting to die, but they're not going to be able to die. Mm -hmm. So as we look at uh, this uh, fifth, this fifth trumpet, when the fifth trumpet is sounded, the Bible said that Satan will be given the key to the bottomless pit. And what's in the bottomless pit? That's where a lot of the other demons were, uh, and they were chain in so many words but he will be given the key to this bottomless pit and the Bible said that uh, you're going to have demon possessed locusts that will come out of this pit now we know back also during uh, Moses time there was what 10 plagues and we also know that locusts was one of those particular plagues but here in this particular passage as the Bible said out of this bottomless pit it's going to be demon possessed locusts. And I thought about that I, and I kind of did a little research. And it says that these locusts here, they're going to be almost the size of horses. Mm -hmm. Did you imagine that? Locusts almost the size of horses. And it said they're going to have what you may call a human face. Uh, they're going to have teeth as like a lion. They're not going to be killing people, but they're going to be tormenting them. And they're going to sting, they're going to be stinging people who does not have that mark or that seal that God has placed on them. If you have that seal going through this particular tribulation period, if you have God's seal on you, those locusts will not be able to touch you. And anybody else, they're going to sting you just like a, a scorpion. But we don't have to worry about that because we're talking about, these are the tribulation saints here. The church today is not going to go through that. As we said last week also, uh, the church left around about the third or the fourth chapter in Revelation. That's nothing else mentioned about the church. 
And you really, when, once we get to the fourth chapter, there's nothing else mentioned about the church. So the church shipped out a long time ago. And whether you believe that the church is going to be raptured before the tribulation or midway in the tribulation or after the tribulation, and we're not going to argue on that. The main thing is you do agree that the church will be raptured. Mm -hmm. That's all that's important. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, uh, sometimes you can kind of, uh, you know, you run into people sometimes and they, if you don't get each event in the right order mm -hmm. or correct order, sometimes that can cause confusion. But mm -hmm. God is not the author of confusion. And, and besides, you know, God will give you what he wants you to have at that particular time. Okay, uh, and, and at this uh, fifth chapter, again, this these locusts will be tormenting people for five, the Bible says for five months. They'll be tormented for five months. They won't be able to die. They will seek to die, but they're not going to be able to die. Death will be hidden from them. And after that uh, fifth chapter comes, it, it says after the sixth trumpet is sounded, the Bible said there's going to be four angels that have been bound at Euphrates. They're going to be released to kill one third of mankind. And that's in Revelation, the ninth chapter, the uh, 13th verse. And what this, uh, what these four uh, uh, demons are going to be doing, they're going to collect an army of two million uh, soldiers. And what they do, what they're going to do is going to be killing a third of mankind. And these plagues, they're going to also bring plagues, plagues of fire, smoke, and also suffering. And of course, some of the people that will go through that, uh, as a, you know, it says a third of them are going to die. It's either going to be by fire, smoke, or suffering. And I can tell you right now, most people die from smoke inhalation. Mm -hmm. it, you die from smoke, well, once smoke gets in enough in your lungs, you uh, not only faint, but you're unconscious. And if you know if nobody gets to you in time, uh, what fire does, if you're in his way, he has no choice but to what? Burn you, burn you up. Because uh, fire travels also. Uh, also, the Bible, this was very interesting also. It says those who are not killed during that tribulation mm -hmm. time, uh, they will still refuse to repent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like it is today. Mm -hmm. You can preach that word, teach that word, but some people refuse to repent. Mm -hmm. Some people are angry with God for whatever reason. And that's no reason to be angry with God. He's a loving God. He loves you whatever choice you choose. If you choose not to accept his son as your personal savior, he still loves you the same. Mm -hmm. If you choose not to accept him as a as a as a penitent, as a judgment. We talked about a little bit last week. The white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. That would be for all unbelievers there. Don't be no believers that you'll be there to be sentenced on your eternal destination. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good place to be. We know there's a rich man who's already there in the, in the book of uh, John, I think, 11th chapter. Mm -hmm. He's in torment. And he's speaking. What's speaking? His conscience. He knows mm -hmm. he's there. So therefore, you will know where you are once you leave from this side of the world. And as I said before, this is not to scare or to, mm -hmm. to make people afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, once children of God, once you got your business straight, we just continue to stay what? faithful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because there's no fear. The Bible says, what? Perfect love cast out fear. So we don't have to be afraid of what's going on. And everything that's going on in this world mm -hmm. right now, and what's going to go on when you and I leave if we don't get raptured away? It doesn't. It didn't catch God off guard. Mm -hmm. He knew it was coming before it came. Mm -hmm. But the, the the key is that we have to make sure that we are committed and faithful to God, mm -hmm. because as He said with these Jews, He will protect His own, and He will watch over His own. He will make sure that we get to our destination. And thank God we've been sealed to the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has already sealed us. So we've already got our stamp of approval. So if the rapture was to take place to God, the dead in Christ will rise first. And we that remain on this earth mm -hmm. will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's good news. Mm -hmm. That is good news. Yes, sir. As we get further into the lesson, uh, look at
quickly, we're going to look at these two witnesses that God empowers uh, on earth during this tribulation period. Obviously, God will empower his two witnesses to prophesy. Some say they, these was Moses and Elijah. Uh, some say they, uh, some of the other prophets. It didn't give us exactly who they are, but if you can look at uh, some of the, the writings, you can say, yeah, yeah, this happened during Moses' time. But the Bible said that God would give these two witnesses power to prophesy for 42 months, which is nothing but 1,260 days. And it said that they would have power to shut heaven so no rain will be able to come on the earth. Mm. That was during Elijah's time, too. Remember? Mm -hmm. Elijah spoke that no rain would come. There was no rain. Mm -hmm. Also, these, uh, these, these two witnesses will have uh, power. Uh, they also they will, they will also have power to uh, prophesize and turn water into blood. Well, we know who turned water into blood. That was during who? Mm -hmm. Moses' day. Mm -hmm. And uh, also they will have power to strike the earth with plague, plagues mm -hmm. as often as they desire. And get this, if anybody or anyone that would try to harm them mm -hmm. during the prophecy during this prophecy, they will be able to devour them with their mouth with fire. And I said that just to say this, and this goes for you and myself as mm -hmm. children of God, and I do believe this, uh, whatever whatever your assignment is, whatever that, need, whatever that means to you, if God has given you an assignment or uh, something to complete, he will protect you, mm -hmm. he will watch over you, mm -hmm. because we remember now, if he gave it to you, He's already given you provision yeah. to accomplish the assignment. Mm -hmm. So you can't leave until you finish what he has given to you. Why would God give you an assignment and all of a sudden something happened? No. Mm -hmm. Once he gives us an assignment, it doesn't matter whatever that assignment is because in each child of God, you have an assignment. Mm -hmm. Once he gives you that assignment, even Satan can't do that. Mm -hmm. He can't do no more than what you allow him to do. So therefore, these two witnesses were able to do what the word of God said and God protected them the whole time through that tribulation. As time went on, the Bible also said that these witnesses, uh, they, this, uh, the, the Antichrist, the beast, uh, he killed them, he killed them, and their bodies was laid in the street for three and a half days. And guess what? The people of the world that they preached to made fun of them. Mm -hmm. They exchanged gifts. They were so happy and excited that these two witnesses was no longer uh, torment them with the word of God, that they were celebrating and having parties and all that stuff. But the Bible also said that uh, uh, that Jesus resurrected them and he took them on to, uh, to heaven. Now this seventh angel uh, sounded his trumpet and we're kind of going into the lesson a little bit. This seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine how loud they were? Mm -hmm. I was trying to trying to find something kind of to see how loud these voices were. I could come up with nothing but something like a million, uh, a, a stadium that can house a million or two million <laughs> people. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the national, when the land of the free and the home of the brave, mm -hmm. all everybody just start just going wow. That's how loud it was. They probably even louder in heaven, of course, but that's the only uh, thing I could come up with for is this loudness that these particular, mm -hmm. uh, these voices were in heaven. And uh, it says, which said, the kingdom of the, of the world has become the kingdom of the Lord, and he will reign forever. So there would be a heaven or a declaration that God and his son Jesus would be taken over after uh, he has destroyed the dominion, the authority, and the powers of this world. You say, well, what's wrong with the, the, the powers, uh, dominion uh, of the world? It's wicked. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Jesus is going to take over? He's coming to take over all the kingdoms and set it up for his children because we know when God sets something up, it's going to be right, it's going to be in order, mm -hmm. and it's going to be done the way he desired for it to be. If you look at our world system today, everything is confused. Everything is chaos. 
You can't put your trust in nobody or anything. That's the kind of world that we're living in. But when God sets his kingdom up, you won't have those issues. Praise God. You won't have those issues to deal with in so many words. And the Bible also says that Satan is the head of these, uh, these authorities as I talked about earlier. And these demonic forces, they are influenced by demonic forces and stuff. They kind of set up like an army. They have your what, lieutenant, they have your sergeant. That's when this, this is what this demonic organization is. He's got demonic forces dispatched different places, different areas all over the world. But also, God has angels dispatched different places all over the world. And also, we as children of God, we have a ministering angel also. And I pray that we're not running our angel away by talking negative against God's word because those angels only do what the word of God says. Praise God. Mm -hmm. All right. As we move on, it says the announcement in Revelation 11 chapter, the 16th verse, that God and Jesus will be taken over and will cause great celebration in heaven. So the church will fall down. When we talk about the church, we're talking about the 24 elders. We're talking about the angels. Now, these 24 elders, a lot of people still kind of trying to guess who they are. Some say they was to the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament. Some say the 12 uh, uh, apostles in the New Testament. All I can say is they represent the church. <laughs> well, that, that's, that should be good enough because if anything, anybody in heaven, you represent the church. Because I went but one church in so many words. But anyway, uh, Jesus, would, they will be celebrated in heaven. The church will fall down on their faces and worship God. They will thank him because he is alive. And they will be exercising great power by, by starting a new earthly reign. That's when that new Jerusalem is going to be coming, as we talk about that in the 19th chapter. Mm -hmm. The new Jerusalem and the new earth and the stuff that's going to be come, that's going to come. But of course, right now, God is kind of coming to the final end of this evilness, this wickedness. He's getting ready to do away with it. Again, as I said, Satan is trying to get as many people, a third of the, of the world, to try to follow him. Because once he gets whoever he's going to get, it's going to be settled at the Battle of Armageddon. But we already know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. It's already been uh, said who's going to win. But again, this is something that has to take place. And as Bible said that the nations were angry uh, and the wrath has come. But why would the world be angry? Because God is getting ready to take over. That's one thing about Satan. He, he don't want you to take over his territory. And when you start taking over, messing or dabbing in Satan's territory, you're talking about ruthless, angry, or he throws fits. And that's why as you and I, as children of God, we have to make sure that we're not owning no titles in church. Because they're not yours. Mm -hmm. He has given, God has given the church gifts. Mm -hmm. Not you giving yourself a gift. Mm -hmm. So therefore, a, a title is nothing but a title. Mm -hmm. When you stand before the Lord, he ain't looking at no title. Mm -hmm. He gonna look at you and say, what have you done? Mm -hmm. And as we said last week, I know your works. I know your works. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we're not hung up on titles. But again, uh, uh, that the nation will become angry because God is getting ready to set up his kingdom and Satan know that his time is about to come to an end. Therefore, that's why he's doing what he's doing to try to get as many people, not only during the tribulation, but as many people today to follow him or to look at God or put off accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Because you got plenty of time. You only have this day. Tomorrow's not the promise. Tomorrow's not promised. You only have what you have now. And if Jesus come back today and you have not accepted him as your personal savior, that's it. That's done. Because the Bible says it's appointed to man what? Wants to die. And after that, the judgment. Christians only die one time. That's physical. But if you're a sinner, you die twice. Spiritually mm -hmm. and physically. Mm -hmm. So again, I would not procrastinate. Today, I would accept Jesus. I'll find somebody that knows Jesus Christ and say, hey, show me how I can become a child of God. You get to a good Bible teaching church. I recommend New Jerusalem is a good Bible teaching church. And land yourself there and let God plant you and grow you up as a child mm -hmm. of God. 
That's good news for somebody, I'm telling you, because there's a lot of people that don't have a church home. I know who watch a lot of TV, uh, the evangelists, the televisions, or whoever you want to watch, but there's nothing like real mm -hmm. in-person fellowship where you can see a person, where you can touch them, where you can kind of engage with them. Mm -hmm. That's important right there. Mm -hmm. And thank mm -hmm. God we're looking forward to coming back together with all our members, uh, even though those who've been listening to the different series of lessons, we're looking forward to you come. Those who have not yet made a step into the house of God, there's no fear. Mm -hmm. what, what is the fear? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You need to concentrate on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus already settled that 2,000 years ago. Yeah. If you trust God and do what he yeah. said to do, you won't be walking around here worrying about, uh, well, uh, is this person uh, tested this? No, 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 brother. So, so Jesus was around lepers. Mm -hmm. He hung around lepers. He hung around people that you and I would say they're unclean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are we afraid of? If God is with you, he's more than a world against you. Amen. So therefore Amen. we have no fear. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure when you come into this house, we're not talking about no, uh, I mean, we're going to follow protocol. I mean, that's something that we do. But I'm not coming in here. I'm coming here to worship God. Yeah. And I'm not thinking about what the world uh, would try to introduce bring fear that, but that, because that's what's going on the world mm -hmm. will introduce fear into the church and you, next thing you know the church start dictating and start doing what the world say do right. no the church is supposed to tell the world what to do not the mm -hmm. world tell the church what to do we got it backwards mm -hmm. are you following mm -hmm. let me get over this is the last part of it though <laughs> um, but God will open his heaven the heavenly temple revealing the ark of the covenant of course, we know that the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament, that was a temple, and nobody, only the priests were allowed to go into that temple and, on behalf of the uh, children of God. Mm -hmm. That Ark represents the presence and the protection of God. Wherever, wherever God's people went, that Ark went with them. Mm -hmm. And it was housed in a secret place, and that was God's protection, mm -hmm. that was God anointed with that man or that woman. Right here, brothers and sisters, we're going to stop right here, but I pray that you was able to get something out of the lesson. Uh, we're almost finished with these series of lessons and revelations. A lot of gift again. The Bible says you're blessed when you read the book of Revelation out loud and when you listen to it and also when you obey what the word of God says. But again, thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers. And we look forward to coming back if the Lord says so.